Did you just get a DJI Osmo Action 4 and you're wondering how to use it? In this quick start guide, I'll show you how to do the initial setup of the camera and walk you through the screen and button layouts and show you photo, video, and time-lapse settings. I'll also show you my exact custom settings that I use to film travel videos and vlogs for my travel YouTube channel. As always, there are chapter markers down below if you want to skip around, and if you find this video helpful, please check out the video description below for ways that you can help support my channel. So the first thing to do, I'm telling you this now because this takes the most time, is that you want to make sure that the included extreme battery is charged. The camera comes with a USB-C cable, so insert the battery and go to the small side door of the camera. Press the button and pop the door down to reveal the USB-C port. Plug in the cable and insert the other side into a USB-C charger. If you use the sold separately DJI Quick Charger, you can get 80% battery in 18 minutes. Alternatively, if you got the Adventure Combo, it comes with a portable battery charger, so you can use that to charge up to three batteries. But it's not a battery brick though, so it does have to be plugged in. It also stores your batteries, and there are two slots on top to hold spare memory cards. Speaking of, make sure that you have a micro SD memory card, which is purchased separately. I prefer to have at least 64 gigs of storage. I'll put some recommendations in the description below. To insert the battery and the memory card, go to the side door, press the button, and pop it up. There's a little slot on the side for the memory card. Make sure that this door and the USB-C port doors are closed because when they're open, this camera is not waterproof. To get the footage off of your memory card, you can use the included USB-C cable to connect it directly to a computer or offload by connecting the camera to the DJI MIMO phone app. Or you can do what I do, which is insert the micro SD card into a card reader and pop that into your computer. To do this method, you might have to buy a separate memory card reader or adapter. The next thing you wanna do is activate the camera and and download the latest firmware. So you have to activate this camera by connecting it to the DJI MIMO phone app. You can do it five times without doing it, but then after that it forces you to make that connection. Now some people think this is a negative, but honestly all action cameras that I've used make you connect the camera to the app to download the latest firmware. So in my opinion, it's not too different from doing that. Now after you activate the camera, make sure that you download the latest firmware to get the latest features. This can take a little while, so budget some time for it. Next, we're gonna do a quick camera layout tour. So first of all, power on the camera by pressing on the side power button. You can cycle through the camera shooting modes either by swiping left and right or by tapping the bottom left corner icon. I'll dive into the exact settings that I use for each mode later on in this video, but for now, let's continue walking through the screen layout. On the top left, you'll see how much space is left on your memory card. The top right shows the remaining battery life. The middle left is the preview button to review the media that you've shot so far. The middle right icon reveals the settings. Again, I'll dive deeper into those later on. The bottom right is a zoom button, available in every mode except for time-lapse mode. You can hold down the button and slide to zoom in and out, but just be aware that this does degrade the image quality. So make sure that you review the zoom feature image quality on a computer before you actually end up using it. The bottom middle button lets you choose your image quality and your resolution, and the bottom left button lets you change camera modes. Now let's go into the control menu by swiping down from the top of the screen. First is custom mode, which lets you save up to five custom modes that you can easily and quickly access specific settings. I'll go over my exact custom modes later on in this video. Next is orientation lock, which is on by default, so the camera automatically changes from horizontal to vertical. But you can actually lock this orientation if you plan to film only in horizontal or in vertical format. Next to that is screen lock. Tap to lock and swipe to unlock the screen. Above that is quick switch. Here you can select what parameters you want to be cycled through whenever you press the quick switch button after the camera is turned on. Next to that is screen brightness. Just slide to make the screen bright or dim. Below that is voice control. Tap to enable. Next is full front screen. Tap to enable or to disable the full front screen display. And finally, we have settings. There's a lot to unpack here, so I'm just gonna stick to the settings that I change. The rest I leave on default. First is snapshot. I make sure to have this turned on. When the camera is powered off, I can hit the record button to get into a quick recording mode. I have this set to last settings, but you can specify if you want it to be a custom mode, a video, or a hyperlapse. 
After you're done recording in snapshot mode, you'll have three seconds to tap the screen if you want to keep the camera on, or the camera automatically powers off. Next is voice control, which lets you use the camera with voice commands. Here you can enable it, as well as choose the language and preview which commands that your camera will understand. Next is sounds. I choose to have this muted because I don't like hearing the camera sounds, but you can select a certain volume if you want to hear the sound effects of the camera. Next is screen off when recording. By default, this is set to five minutes, but I personally like to have this set to about 15 seconds. I'd recommend setting this to basically any setting here that is not never, otherwise your camera might overheat if you're filming for long periods of time. Below that is auto power off, or how long the camera is idle before it powers off. Mine is set to one minute. Next is LED. So if you want the front and back LED buttons to turn red when you're recording, you might want to have this setting on. Towards the bottom are language and date and time in case you need to modify any of these. And then you have format, which is how you delete everything on your memory card. You'll want to do this periodically to free up space on your memory card. And finally, you have factory reset in case you want to restore all of your settings on the camera to default. Now I'll go over detailed settings for each mode, including photo, video, slow-mo, and time lapse. Starting with photo mode, tap on the middle bottom button to select your aspect ratio. I prefer 16:9 as opposed to 4:3 because 16:9 matches the aspect ratio of my videos and it really fills the screen. You can also select a countdown timer if you want to use one. Next, tap on the settings icon and then tap on the pro button. You'll see four settings here, starting with exposure. I usually leave this on auto, but I might go in and change the EV to positive or negative values if I want my image to be brighter or darker, but usually I leave it on zero. Over on the right side, you can also toggle the ISO range. This affects the image brightness, but the higher the ISO, the more grain or noise that you're gonna see in your image. So I typically have this on 100 to 6400. Now, if you want manual control over your camera settings, you can tap on M and then you can select your exact shutter speed and ISO. I only recommend doing this if you know what you're doing. Hit the confirm button when you're ready to move on. Next is white balance. I leave this on auto, but again, you can hit M if you want to toggle it manually. Below that is FOV or field of view. You can choose between wide or standard de-warp in photo mode. I usually have this on standard because it's less distorted than shooting in wide. And finally, you have format. By default, it's set to JPEG, but you can also tap it to enable RAW plus JPEG. Just be aware that RAW files are bigger and they require editing, but you can edit more of your image, so it can be a good option if you want full-fledged editing power over your photos. Next, let's go over to video mode and tap on the bottom middle button. Start by selecting your resolution and your frame rate. And keep in mind that the bigger these numbers get, the more memory card space it's gonna take up and the battery will be drained faster. By default, it's on 1080p 30 frames per second, which is fine for most people. But you can also go up to 2.7K or even 4K resolution. Note that both of these resolutions also come with aspect ratio choices, 4.3 or 16.9. I prefer 16.9 because it fills the frame nicely. And I typically shoot in 4K 30 frames per second because I like having a higher resolution for my videos. And while 60 frames per second will give you the very best quality on this camera, I find that editing, exporting, and uploading that video takes double the time. And I have a 2023 MacBook Pro that I edit on. So you have to strike the balance between image quality choice and the amount of file storage and editing time that it's gonna take. Now, by the way, you can also go over to 100 or 120 frames per second, but just bear in mind that if you do this, you're actually shooting in slow motion video, not normal speed video. Up top, you have a button to enable loop recording to turn the Osmo Action 4 into a dash cam. I personally never use this feature, but some of you guys might. On top is the RS button, which enables built-in stabilization. Note that each level of stabilization crops into your shot just a little bit, but if you're gonna be moving with this camera, then I recommend having some form of RS or Rocksteady. I prefer Rocksteady Plus, which is the maximum stabilization mode, or even horizon balancing, which helps keep my horizon level up to 45 degrees. But keep in mind that it only works with the standard D-Warp FOV lens, so it might be grayed out if you're shooting in a wide or ultra-wide FOV. Now there's also the Horizon Steady Mode, which keeps your horizon level during a 360-degree rotation. 
but it only works in standard dwarf FOV and also only for 1080p or 2.7K resolution. It does not work for 4K resolution. Now let's back out and go to the settings button. By default, you'll only see four settings available to choose from. FOV, which is where you can choose between standard D-warp, wide, and ultra-wide lenses. Also, note that if you shoot in 1080p or 2.7K resolution, you can also choose a narrow FOV, which is the tightest framing. Also, EIS priority and low light. I usually have this enabled. And below that is low light image enhancement, which is only available when shooting in 2.7K or 4K, or it is grayed out as an option. Finally, there's image adjustment setting, which is brand new on the Osmo Action 4. You can leave it on the default or select a portrait preset. I prefer to keep it on default, but you can also select custom to dial down your exact sharpness. At most, I recommend going to a sharpness of one and definitely not to two, as this ends up being too sharp. You can also manually select noise reduction, but again, I like to leave this on default. Now, if you wanna unlock more settings, just tap on the pro button on top until it turns yellow. You'll then see exposure and white balance, which I talked about in the photo section, but I usually leave these both on auto. The only things I might change here are the EV values to brighten or dim the shot, and also the ISO range. I like to have it at about 100 to 6400. Next is color mode. It's on normal by default, but you can tap it to enable 10-bit color and D-log M. Just bear in mind that D-log needs to be color graded or edited, so only enable this if you plan to edit your footage. And at the bottom are the image adjustment and low light image enhancement, which I talked about previously. Now, while in pro mode, you can also tap on the microphone icon to make some sound adjustments. You can choose the channel to be stereo or two track audio or mono, one track audio. I like to keep it on the default of stereo. You can also set your wind reduction to on or off. I like to have it on most of the time. And since we're talking about sound, you can also attach an external USB-C microphone to the Action 4 without using an adapter. This is optimized for the DJI wireless mic, so I'll use that microphone to demonstrate. But you go over to the USB-C port of the camera and very carefully pop the door off. Then make sure that the DJI mic receiver has the USB-C connection and pop that onto the side of the camera. When it's attached, there's a microphone indicator to verify connection, and then you can just start recording. The audio and camera will be replaced with that of the DJI microphone, and in my opinion, the sound is a lot better. Next, let's talk about slow motion settings. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you can activate slow-mo from the regular video mode by tapping on the middle section and choosing 100 or 120 frames per second. But the interface makes a little bit more sense if you swipe over to the slow-mo mode instead. Once again, tap on that bottom middle button. At 1080p, you can choose four times or 120 frames per second slow motion, or you can choose eight times or 240 frames per second slow-mo. This is the only resolution on this camera that allows you to shoot in 240 frames per second slow motion. At 2.7K and 4K, you can only choose 120 frames per second. Next, back out into the main screen and tap on the far right settings button. You'll see FOV and image adjustment choices in the non-pro mode. And if you hit the pro mode, that makes exposure, white balance, and color available. I usually leave these on auto or normal. And finally, let's talk about the time-lapse settings. Tap on that bottom middle button and notice that you can choose between time-lapse and hyperlapse. If you're not familiar with it, a hyperlapse is a time-lapse that you record while you're moving, so it gives you stabilization. It's best used if you're walking, running, or driving. You can choose the hyperlapse rate or leave it on auto, which is my preferred choice. Now, hyperlapses can only be done in video mode, so don't forget to also choose your video resolution. I usually have it on 4K. When you have hyperlapse selected, you can also tap on the settings and select your FOV, your image adjustment, and your EIS priority in low light. In comparison, a regular time lapse is best used if the camera will be planted somewhere. You'll notice that there's some preset settings available like crowds, clouds, and sunsets. I like these because they have built-in time intervals, so the camera will only shoot and record for the specified amount of time, and the results are pretty spot on. If you choose custom, you can set your own shooting interval and your video duration. 
The bottom chunk of time is how long the camera shoots, and the middle section tells you how long the resulting video will be. Be sure to select the video resolution as well, but you can also choose to shoot in video plus photo mode by going back into the settings, hitting the Pro button, and tapping on Format. Just remember that RAW photos require editing and also take up more memory card space compared to JPEG photos. From this menu, you can also choose Exposure, White Balance, and FOV. Next, I'll go over my custom modes that I use for my camera. I primarily use the Osmo Action 4 to shoot travel videos and vlogs. So my custom modes are set for video. So the first one is 4K Standard D Warp with Horizon Balancing. Second is 4K 30 frames per second Standard D Warp with Horizon Balancing. Next is 4K 60 frames per second, wide with Rocksteady Plus, and 4K 30 frames per second, wide with Rocksteady Plus. I have different FPS settings in case I need to conserve battery and memory card space. So in those cases, I'll go from shooting 4K 60 to 4K 30. I also set these as custom modes because I find that swiping around and choosing the frame rates and the settings can be kind of difficult when I'm trying to move quickly, so it's really easy to make a mistake. Plus, getting in and out of horizon balancing mode can be a little confusing. When it's on, you can't choose an FOV. You're kind of stuck in standard D-warp mode, so it takes a few extra button pushes to turn horizon balancing off and on and choose my FOV. So for me, these are the custom settings that work the best. So that is my walkthrough through the Osmo Action 4 action camera, as well as my custom settings that I use to shoot photos and videos. If you guys have any questions, leave me comments down below, and also stay tuned because I'll be doing a DJI Osmo Action 4 accessories video coming soon, as well as comparisons to the brand new GoPro Hero 12 and the iPhone 15, both of which are coming soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.